Now let's look at the basic vacuum forming procedure. Um, first thing we'll do is turn on the power and also the heat. The heating coil must, must be up to speed before you pull it over the material, so always preheat your coil. Um, especially for thicker materials because if you're trying to bring the coil and the material up at the same time, uh, they become, uh, it becomes very difficult to judge when the material is ready to vacuum form. So while that's going on, we'll take and we'll place our material. You'll notice I, I've t I have a little technique where I take a stick pin and I position it in the center of the logo because logo positioning with the Proform mouth guard material is very important because that logo actually relates to a strengthening area in the product which will help the anterior section against impact. So I place that little stick pin in there. I did that prior and I st now stick that in the frame. And if I was to locate the pin after I put the material in, I would go underneath and I would stick it in. But for time's sake and for brevity, I've already positioned the stick pin in the center of the logo and I've already, logoed, I've already lowered that logo onto the model and have the position where I, where I want to have uh, the logo lay. At that point, I would take and just pull that stick pin out. It's just a slight indentation. It's not going to affect the the uh, product whatsoever as far as the way it vacuum forms. And uh, some things to mention while, while we're waiting for the coil to come up and that is don't leave the hood over the top of the phenolic handles, they'll get extremely warm. I also wanted to mention that on the lower half of the uh, unit we do have the gasless frame and we also have the raised platform which allows for better vacuuming. While we're waiting and it should I was going to say while we were waiting, but it looks like the coil is up to speed. It's just about orange. At this point, while it's orange, we swing it over the material and begin the heating process. Generally, it's about a minute and a half or so. Um, there are two ways to check an indication of whether or not the material is ready, and one is visually, and we're looking for about a half inch droop from the bottom of the frame. And the second is what I call a tactile. And the tactile uh, feel is basically I reach under and I feel around the edge of the frame. The center of the material obviously is going to get hot rather warm, rather quickly, but around the periphery of the frame, um, it tends to be stiffer. So what we're looking for is a nice pliability around the edge of the frame. And we start to get that, and we'll look underneath again just to notice. You, you'll also notice that a couple of things occur when you turn the unit on. Uh, one is that you'll get a smell uh, of oil. That's a manufacturing smell. Not to be concerned, a little smoke. That's all from putting the unit together and after a couple of usages that won't occur. And you'll also notice that on the material itself it will tend to bow at first and it'll come up and then it will lower down. And I am just touched it outside just to see. And again feeling around the periphery. Now it begins to drop in the center and we watch for that dropping. It's a droop is what we call that and I feel around the periphery and it's very pliable now around the, around the edges of the frame. And so then at this point we would turn the handle to loosen it and then create the vacuum. You'll notice that I used Instacool. It's a product of compressed gas which will allow me to cool the material, keep it from rebounding once we take the vacuum off of uh, the machine. Um, it works extremely well. I, I would be most concerned about rebound on products that are about 0.40 or thicker. So that's Instacool and like again I say, we want to cool the outside so that it doesn't rebound.